Z-Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru, back from Computex. Corsair Hydro X is here. Corsair announced Hydro X at Computex. Today is the day that Hydro X launches. Tragically, the review kit arrived uh, the day actually I was leaving for Computex. This review kit here, there's a lot of stuff to get through. I have not had time to do a build with this hardware. This is basically my preview. If you recall, Mel did the video for Kit Guru from Computex. I was at a, another meeting. Uh, so this is my take on Hydro X. The idea of Hydro X is that Corsair wants to bring custom loop to the mainstream, albeit mainstream enthusiasts, that's common sense. And these are the components at the heart of the system. So graphics block, this is the XG7 RGB which is for an RTX 2080 Founders Edition. This block is unusual in the Corsair system in that it is CNC machined. The other parts are uh, designed for mass manufacture. But then with graphics blocks that makes sense because if you want to produce a block, for example, for a Gigabyte Aorus graphics card or for some MSI graphics card, you need to bring a variant to the equation. And if you had the tool for that, that costs you a heck of a lot of money. Graphics blocks are priced at 135 to 165 here in the UK. They all have RGB. They all connect to IQ. That's going to be a recurring theme. The range of graphics cards that are covered is fairly select. Essentially it's high-end RTX, high-end GTX uh, from previous gen and also I saw a mention of Vega uh, as to whether that's a custom aftermarket Vega or reference. If it's reference you simply can't buy those cards these days as far as I'm aware so in a sense it's Nvidia only but Vega does get a nod. There are two CPU blocks. This is the little block for LJ115X and AM4. That's the XC7 RGB and then the XC9 is the big block for LGA2060 and also TR4 Threadripper. Prices of CPU blocks, aluminium top 75 quid, uh, common or garden 70 quid basically the same money when all said and done. And it is significant that the mounting system looks exactly like an Ace Tech all-in-one, which obviously uh, Corsair knows all about all-in-one mounting systems. So you snap on and off your mount, on you go. And then we come to the pump reservoir, the XD5 RGB. So again, RGB again, IQ. It's significant because this is a D5 pump uh, you have this bracket and mounting system uh, which is rubber mounted and then you mount that on a fan mount either 120 or 140. The reservoir is fixed although I don't doubt for a moment the Corsair could come out with different versions but that's only 100mm tall and they've got RGB a, a row of LEDs in the base. Uh, obviously as it's not turned on you don't see that. This is a subtle variant on existing D5 pumps. Uh, so, it, for example, it runs on Molex power, it has PWM control. Uh, so in that sense, you know, we, we've seen it all before. Uh, so the weather on the RGB, that is different. The fact it's injection molded, that's also uh, significant because while it actually looks and feels plasticky and literally is plasticky, Corsair is adamant. It's cost them a lot of money for tooling, uh, to use the uh, acrylic, and also it uh, aids longevity. Now, obviously, we can't know that at the moment, but they are adamant that had you gone down even the borosilicate route, uh, which they're saying will be cheaper than this approach, this is clearly aimed at mass manufacture and the long term. So that, to my mind, is almost the most interesting part on the table. Nonetheless, this is this is the heart of the system. These parts have all come from Corsair. They're all new. However, we all know that Corsair uh, poached or hired some uh, staff from EK. So the, the design ethos is familiar to us. None of these parts looks radical new, but that isn't the point. Corsair isn't attempting to uh, invent the wheel, come up with something radically different. They're attempting to take existing technologies and extend the market. <laughs> Let's just rattle through a few detail points before we move on. So to my mind, the aesthetic of the graphics block with this manifold here is a hybrid of blocks we've seen from EK and also from the Germans, Aqua Computer, and possibly if you stretch to heat killer, I'm not so sure about that. But uh, that is all swish, I like it, it's kind of familiar. That on the other hand, that flow indicator, that uh, Corsair is making a song and dance about, I've not seen that in a graphics block before. When you flip the block over, uh, you've got pre-applied thermal pads, you've got a cavity where your cabling goes for your RGB connections. That's neat, you get a back plate, so that's all good stuff. 
no obvious problems there and as I say that CNC machined. Slide in the small CPU block so you get a, a mounting plate uh, which is familiar to anyone that's used a, an all-in-one. Uh, there's the alterna AMD plate, there's some fasteners and here we have the actual block itself with pre-applied thermal paste there we go, snap off that particular hold down so you have the bare block itself. And you can see that the 2G quarters are symmetrical. Can't see any markings for in and out, however, okay, there's a jet plate in there so there is an in and out dedicated. You've got pre-applied thermal paste in this kind of peculiar honeycomb pattern which I, I've not seen that before and you can see it's assembled with a whole load of torques, one, two, three, four, five, six, a dozen little torques and then there's more torques holding the plastic shell on. The RGB you can see there is behind. The block itself looks quite large, I mean AM4 and LGA 115X are quite small, that gives you a lot of coverage which when you consider 8 core Intel, 12 core AMD, uh, we believe 10 core Intel maybe coming into the year, 16 core AMD, uh, small socket, lots of heat, that block would appear to be uh, built to cater for that. We step up to the big block which looks like it's about the same size. I mean, what's the difference? Okay, I'm saying that's the same block by eye. Obviously the mounting system is different. Uh, you've got the aluminium top cover, which is an extra fiver, but broadly speaking, that block looks to me to be the same as the uh, XC7, which suggests that the XC7 is uh, gonna be, if anything, over-engineered, which is a good thing, I like that. Okay, pump, pump reservoir. So only one pump res in there, uh, list at the moment. These are those fan mounts. So you screw uh, this bracket to that. You then mount, depending on how you're doing things, for example, like uh, so, obviously you've got uh, slots you can see there, that can go, that can go, all happy. And you've got a load of mounting hardware to install. Oh, you've also got, uh, Oh, what's that? Is that a level port? Okay, so this obviously goes into a G quarter, goes into one of these unions. That's got a connection point. That's either a temperature sender or checking for fluid level. I'm going to guess that's a temperature sender. Not absolutely sure. That's my guess. Also, Corsair makes a point that they include a power jumper, so you can run your loop when you built it, obviously by jumping your main power connector and your power supply. So yes, it's 150 quid, but that is a system. There's no denying your CPU block, GPU block pump res are important. In fact, they are critically important. They also uh, make a massive difference to the aesthetic of your system, but they are not all of your system in terms of liquid cooling. So Corsair's come up with the rest of the hardware that you require, but this is interesting because it comes from their partners. So uh, these radiators, for example, while well, they are Corsair branded, Corsair boxed, these are XR5 parts. They are actually by Hardware Labs who make black ice. Uh, I've got black ice radiators on the shelf behind you. You may have noticed this. I, in fact, I use black ice in my own personal build. And in addition, we've got coolant. Uh, this is actually from Mayhem's, again, it's uh, obviously sold out as Corsair. There's a, a squeezy bottle, I don't know where that comes from. And we have here a load of fittings that come from Bits Power. This is interesting to me, uh, my, my knowledge of Bits Power is very limited. They seem to be uh, uh, catered to the Asian market. Uh, Stuart Tonks is really big on Bits Power. Uh, he's obviously in Australia, so uh, uh, down that neck of the woods. So we've got what I would regard as a decent array of fittings without going completely to town. We've got there's a 90, there's a 45, I don't see a double 45. There we have uh, a 90 where you plug a tube in both ends. There we have compression fittings for soft tubing. Uh, here we have uh, a Y piece, sort of rotary job, uh, so it's like a block on a fitting. Uh, there we have a tap and there we have a fill port. So the, the essentials, but in terms of things like extenders and such like 
I haven't got those. We've also got some soft tubing, which is compatible with the compression fitting, and we've got some hard tubing. Now, the hard tubing is acrylic. Uh, Corsair makes the point they haven't gone for PETG, they're stuck with acrylic, they're happy with that. And you get two sizes, uh, ID 10 mil, OD 12 mil, ID 10 mil, OD 14 mil. This is actually meant to be ID 10, OD 14, and that's what the package says. However, if I take this 14 mil fitting, it doesn't fit because it is actually OD 12 millimeter. Um, which surprises me somewhat. It wiggles around. Um, so that's a mispacked part. And I, I'm truly surprised by that. I've never had that, of course, before. Uh, but it also surprises me because, to my mind's eye, Corsair's had an awfully long time to get this uh, kit ready. And yet they've obviously been doing a huge amount of testing behind the scenes. When we saw Hydro X in inverted commas at Computex 2018, uh, there were a handful of fittings that were clearly aqua computer parts that have been laser etched with the Corsair logo. They were just parts off the shelf. Uh, so even though Hydrex at that stage have been going on for a while, they've been starting to work towards Hydrex. Uh, and clearly when all said and done, I mean, this is from packaging, but you have to check compatibility with this tubing, with these fittings, with that coolant, and that just takes time. Also coolant, pump, radiator combos. But we are assured that it's not just a question of if you use the entire Corsair system, it will work beautifully together. We, uh, we also hear uh, Corsair telling us that if you mix and match hardware from other manufacturers you'll also be good essentially if your coolant is good to use in and I'm pointing at general stuff behind me aqua computer heat killer uh, from watercool.de or indeed EK you're good so even though Corsair has supplied us with this clear coolant and they have some colors coming which are green red blue and purple they're going to be clear colors rather than pastel uh, I don't doubt for a moment they're going to have uh, pastels and such like coming but their blocks are fine with pastels the fin pitch um, of, of the heat exchangers uh, around 0 0.2 0 0.25 mil no problem at all they won't get clogged with nastiness provided you're using good quality kit elsewhere in your loop you can mix and match but obviously uh, the coarse air view is you want to use coarse air end to end and you're guaranteed to be good so we have here what strikes me as being a, a complete range of kit, but I'm sure they have room to expand. But there's a reason why Corsair centers clear coolant, and that is because clear works better with RGB. It means that you can rely on your lighting. And of course, we know that Corsair has their Commander Pro unit, and they also have a whole array of fans, but this is their recommended fan to use, uh, the ML120 RGB. So your case, uh, you stick your fans in there, you link it all into your Commander Pro, you daisy chain your hardware together, particularly the pump reservoir obviously, but also your CPU, GPU blocks, and you have RGB fever going on. So there's going to be a light show when I get around to actually building this hardware into a system. By the by, Commander Pro is obviously an existing part, therefore if you're to buy a whole load of RGB kit, you almost certainly have to budget for that as well. Same is true of your fans. So that's all good. But at this stage in the game, apart from adding the RGB and branding everything Corsair and going for the unified black yellow look, what else has Corsair done? Corsair's neat trick is their configurator. Obviously web-based, so you head to the website, click on the appropriate button, and here we have a whole load of pre-selects. So if you have a Corsair case, hurrah. And then you move on and then you choose your motherboard and so on and so forth. This software is vaguely familiar. We've seen something similar to the EKWB. The difference is obviously is that Corsair is a case supplier, case manufacturer. Select the case, select your motherboard, choose a processor from a drop-down. obviously that's compatible with the motherboard, and you move on. Let's say we have a Founders Edition 2080 Ti, just the one of those rather than SLI. There we go, that's our configuration. So we've sorted out our case, our motherboard, our processor, and our graphics card. We're not looking at uh, monoblocks here, we're looking at a relatively straightforward configuration, obviously. And there we have it, system configured, job done. I should have mentioned earlier that the uh, fittings from Bits Power are available in white, grey, gold, or black. So basically 600 quid's worth of hardware, and you should be good to go. The configurator also asks you, do you want to overclock your CPU and your GPU? And if so, it gives you more radiator area, which obviously costs you more money, provided your case can accommodate those extra radiators. In other words, it's entirely common sense. You're not limited to having a Corsair case. If you have a Fantex, then it'll say, yes, we know all about that. You can fit this radiator and that radiator in your case. 
all happy. So what I've seen so far, the configurator I like, but as I say, it's not entirely new to me. What this is all about is uh, basically making life easy for the enthusiast. You wanna buy hardware, they're saying, yep, this hardware will do the job you want. Uh, buy it, fit it, you'll be happy. And of course, it's driving you towards the Corsair store. This is revenue for Corsair rather than one of their chosen partners. But, you know, can't blame them for that either. As it happens, I've personally bought bits and pieces directly from Corsair fittings for uh, their liquid coolers and such like, and I've run out of, lost a pack of screws or some such. Uh, albeit the carriage cost is relatively expensive, but they arrived next day. So I personally have no complaints with that at all. So Corsair has not reinvented the wheel. None of this stuff is revolutionary whatsoever, although if you want to be really pedantic, you might say the flow indicator in the graphics block is slightly revolutionary. It certainly rotates. But all this stuff is familiar. It has been brought together. They're obviously saying it has a certain level of quality. It will do a certain job. The pricing is typical Corsair, i.e. towards the upper end of the scale, but it's not breathtakingly pricey. I mean, that 150 pound pump assembly there, were at 199, I'd be going, yeah, are you sure boys? But 150 is like, yeah, whatever. Uh, you can live with it. And the fact that your build will cost you probably 600 pounds if you're doing CPU, GPU, plus all the associated parts, or as much as 800 pounds for multiple radiators, that's what it costs. You know, building a custom loop is expensive. And Corsair has clearly said, and we want to slice that market. Corsair brought all-in-one cooling to the mainstream market, and they're clearly doing the same thing with custom loop. Uh, and I have little doubt they're going to succeed. We have to hope the other cooling companies, off the top of my head, Acro Computer, Watercool, uh, Alphacool, Fantex, Bits Power, EK. We have to hope they're going to look at this and go, righty-ho, that's the mainstream that Corsair is attacking. We need to go for more interesting, more exotic. We need to push the technology. We need to keep ahead of them. So it could well be we're going to see some revolutionary stuff coming in the liquid cooling market. I sincerely hope so. But right now, Corsair HydroX is finally here. And in this preview, I've been impressed. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru. Hit the bell button. We'll alert you to new videos as they become available.